Good morning. We have our choir back today. And thank you also to the people who came yesterday and spent quite a few hours putting up new lights, LED lights in the offices, the music room, etc. So thank you to all of you. That was a great gift to our church. Um, also, a few announcements today. Uh, first of all, I'm Kathy Itson, and I'm so happy to welcome you all here and online. It's a great community, and we're so happy that you're with us, all of us. Um, Ash Wednesday is coming up this Wednesday. So we have 7 o'clock service as well as Zoom. So Ashley will be sending out with the Tuesday e-blasts that we get, she'll be sending out the link for the Zoom if you prefer to do it that way rather than come to church physically. But at 7 o'clock on Wednesday, we'll be doing communion as well. So people at home, you'll want to have communion elements with you. And for us here, we will take care of that. Um, let's see, a few things with COVID. Luckily, the numbers are going down. You've all seen this, heard this. The numbers are going down, and that's great. But it's a lot of the hospitalizations. The case numbers are still fairly high, especially in the seven-county area. Not surprised to anyone. We are higher than the rest of Minnesota, as we have been. So the COVID committee and council are still being careful. And so we're not having Pilgrim Guild, Out to Lunch Bunch, um, the One Church Breakfast, or the talent show in March. We're just, we probably could, but we decided it's better to be safe with our people who are more compromised with immunity. And so we aren't doing that for March. We will probably still do, be able to open those up in April. We're expecting. We do, however, have choir and Sunday school are back. The choir is back. The nursery is back. So we're, we're starting to get back to normal. And we want to thank you. Sing. And the congregation can think, sing as, <laughs> Cindy said so. We invite you to please join us in singing this week also. All right. We have several other announcements. People have let me know they want to mention things. So come on up, those of you who want to, and uh, reintroduce yourselves, please. Welcome. Can you hear me okay? Thank you. I'm, my name is Kristen Sonquist. I'm the current church moderator. 
and I'm here to welcome you and help bring us together. I am so grateful to everybody who came today in this beautiful, cool, and calming, and comfortable church. I'm grateful for air conditioning today, grateful for being together with live people. I'm especially um, grateful for our friends who transformed the sanctuary over the week. Isn't it beautiful? I also want to welcome our um, friends and neighbors who are celebrating worship this morning with us online. I've done that a lot myself. It's such a privilege to be together, even when we're apart. So welcome to the people who are at home or on vacation this week and we're still able to gather. I want to also welcome our guests and visitors and dedicate this worship especially to you. I hope you find what I found the first time I came to Robbinsdale Parkway UCC, which is a comforting, comfortable place where I could feel part of a whole, and that's really important at a time like this. Um, I also want to welcome some leaders today. We're having uh, lots of Lots of people share in our worship celebration today. I want to welcome Dr. Jerry Carter, who's going to lead children time, and we, I got to meet you this morning. Also, Dr. Also Reverend Pete Everett, where are you? Give us a way. Okay, nice to meet you. And he's going to be preaching today. We have and many other people that are familiar faces. Um, our pastor T. Michael is here, part, and he's. He's sharing the pulpit with a lot of different people today, but you'll see him join in the service. Um, now, um, I want to talk about the announcements for the week, and then anybody else who has one is welcome to come up to the microphone in the um, aisle, or if that's not comfortable for you, somebody will bring you one, I think. Um, the announcements I know about are that um, we are planning on sharing this summer some summer fire circles. That means we need people with a fire pit or one of those, yeah, I bet a grill would work, um, some place with a yard where we can gather outside and talk about our hopes and dreams and vision for the church. If you are interested in hosting one of those or even attending one of those, Ashley in the back or T. Michael, they're setting them up. Um, we also have something, here's another announcement for you. There's an opportunity. Sometimes people come to church with a joy in their heart and they want to celebrate it. So this is a tradition at Robbinsdale Parkway United Church of Christ. It's called the Happy and Thankful Offering. There's a little pink envelope in your pew. If you are particularly happy or thankful about something, you can put a little offering in there and write down what you're happy or thankful for. I learned this lesson the hard way. It's important to read in a way that other people can read it out loud because that, that'll happen during the offering is um, you, your happy and thankful offering will be shared after the offertory. And let's see, oh, the Whiz Bang Parade is next week, um, July 10th. It looks like I'll be home for it, which is great because it's one of my favorites. You won't get all 10,000 steps. It's, it's a little up and downy, but it's a walk that most people can do. Um, and if you can't do the walk, is there any way to ride? Sure. sure. And is the bandistra playing? Uh, the band is playing. The, the band. Nice. On the back of a big truck. And we give out freezy pops, because we want to remind people that this is a really cool church. Get it? OK. So and I, I've actually. Um, met friends and neighbors there that said, church? What church? You go to church? It's a wonderful outreach and just a plain good time. So if you feel like you want to march in that Robbinsdale whiz -bang parade, it's back to a traditional parade this year and it's your big chance. Uh, let's see. Oh, those freezy pops. We have a thousand bought, but they need a freezer space for the week. So if anybody has an extra space in your freezer, I'm guessing like this much space. I don't know, I haven't seen it. Um, talk to T. Michael or Ashley, and they would love to have some help storing those freezy pops. Okay? Does anybody else have an announcement? No? 
All right. That's okay, too. Um, we have, oh, go ahead. I know. Oh, we didn't talk about Kathy's on sabbatical. Kathy's on sabbatical. Yay, Kathy. Yay. And Carol. Um, <clears throat> what you're looking at, by the way, the different uh, symbols and different things up here, I just want to explain. Uh, Matake Owasi, the ears get up there, meaning we are all related in uh, Lakota, and that is uh, the way they can call their prayers to remind us that we are all related to each other. So it's a very important thing for us, and you'll notice the symbols of all the different faith traditions around there as we're all related. So, big understanding of, of our universal Christianity. So, um, and that was made for me. That's coming up. It's coming up. Yep. It's yes. Thank you. Are you and thanks T. Um, does did Kathy and Carol make it out of the country yet? Uh, they didn't go on yet. Okay. So prayers for Kathy and Carol. Want to start our joys and concerns next, and offer prayers and thanksgiving for both Kathy and Carol. They leave the country on Monday, and they'll be on sabbatical all summer. Um, and also some prayers for Independence Day. This, this part, it's never an easy time to celebrate American Independence Day. There, there's always kind of a mixed feeling. Of course I'm proud of my country. Of course I'm proud of my community. I'm also deeply aware that independence is, um, hasn't been achieved for everybody and that we have um, especially this year in particular, many of us have lost the feeling of freedom, justice, and independence very recently. You all know the news. So I'm just, um, my prayer, my hope is that we can think of independence as, yes, it's a hope and dream for sure, but it needs to be more than that. It needs to be a commitment and something we actively fight for every day. And that's, that's what I'm celebrating tomorrow. And I know you all, you're all feeling kind of the same way. That way to, that time that we hold two truths, or maybe lots more than two truths at the same time, is happening for many of us tomorrow. And um, so that's one. Uh, there is a time for us to get together and celebrate today. And I hope to see many of you there. If my husband is here, he's, he's been making coffee. I, have I told you about this, AJ, that we're going to a potluck at 3 o'clock? Um, back at church today at 3 o'clock, um, the congregations that we share our church with are hosting a community potluck. And I bet it's going to be a really good time. And I would love, and T would love, to see lots of us there in solidarity with our community, our church community. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but I'm going to ask you to think about coming back at three. What could it hurt, right? We're just going to have to walk. We're planning a gardening day today, but we're going to wash our hands and maybe dust off our, sh dust off our shoes and come on over and have a great meal with new friends. And I hope to see lots of you there too. Um, there's also, we talked about bonfires, right? All right, any other, uh, those are the joys and concerns I've got. Any other ones? Oh, good. I'm Cheryl Nordquist, and my daughter Christina will be traveling to Oregon on Thursday morning with her fiance uh, to complete her postgraduate degree. And so I ask her prayers for safe travels. Um, two 23-year-olds in a car going that far is a little nerve-wracking for the parents, so um, thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Carol Bolchek. Um, as many of you know, I spoke about my brother many times. Uh, they just found out he's got tumor on his, on his lungs. So, and he's taken tests on uh, the 6th, so we're hoping it's not cancerous. 
And one more thing, uh, many of you know I work with the homeless, and I hear many, many tears they tell me about. One of the clients came to me last couple weeks ago and said his one and only pride of his life was his cat. Hmm. Being homeless, someone picked a fight with him, and his cat ran away. He was crying so hard that it was uncontrollable, and he asked for prayers. He wants Tiger back, but he said, that's all I have in my life. So, you know, when we have small possessions, that's all we have. So I'm asking prayers for him, too. sister who just found out she has breast cancer and I have a joint for um, my family all came together and surprised me for my birthday yesterday and after I got home um, my we were listening to the radio and I called in and I won tickets to Orlando oh <gasps> so. wow my sister's name is Sherry Parker Good morning. Um, we have a very large joy coming in on next um, Saturday. Lori's daughter, Catherine, is visiting from Seattle. Um, it's been a number of years due to the pandemic that she hasn't um, been in touch. Um, she'll be joining um, Lori's other daughter, Adrian, here. sisters, her sister, and her brothers in a rather large family reading in downtown. And it should be joyous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am Bill. I'd like to pray for my best friend, Mike, a Vietnam veteran. We've been friends for 50 years. He had leukemia a couple of years ago and took the treatment and it was gone. And now it's come back and he has to start treatment again. Thank you. Okay, thank you everybody. As, um, as we get ready for our worship today and we wait for Diane to start the call of worship. I'm going to um, start us off centering us with our land use statement and um, this is at the end I'll do it call and response style because it's not in your bulletin. In 1893 Robbinsdale was established as a faith community we recognize our church resides on stolen land. Taken illegally from the Sisseton and Wapaton bands of the Dakota during the 1851 session 289 Treaty, white settlers are responsible for the genocide, forced assimilation, and systemic violence against the native families and nations who lived in these regions. We who are non-native confess that our ongoing colonization of the land is unjust and that our broken relationship with the land is a root cause of our global climate crisis. We seek to live in a posture of repentance and repair and collectively seek to heal our relationship with the Dakota and Anishinaabe people and with this land and with our own souls. So, center yourselves in that posture and take a deep breath. Let your spirit arrive here for worship as we proclaim together. Robbinsdale Parkway, UCC, stands in solidarity with the indigenous community Friends, neighbors, and caretakers of air, land, and water. Amen. Please stand and body your spirit. 
and join me in the responsive reading of the call to worship. Come together, all you disciples. We will not fear, for God is in this place. Come together with all your gifts and, your, and all your uniqueness. Gather knowing God's grace and love surround us. Come, let Christ be your teacher and the Spirit be your guide. We come with our whole lives ready to serve. by Marcia McPhee. O God of all well-being, we are frightened. We hardly recognize our homeland in this moment. Concern for the least and marginalized has been replaced by thirst for power. Dedication to protection for the vulnerable has been replaced by disregard for thriving. Ethical foundations have been lost to political ambition. Facts are up for questioning based on incompatible worldviews skewed by misinformation and deceit. We are afraid. We are angry. We are deflated. Turn our fear into ferocity. Turn our anger into passionate action. Turn our despair into fortitude. Let us pull even harder on that long, holy arc so that it might bend once again 
towards justice. Amen.
and you are so appreciated. Always remember that. Okay? Be blessed and go in peace. <laughs>Our first scripture reading today is from Philippians, chapter 4, verses 6, 7, and 13. Do not be anxious about anything. Instead, in every situation, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, tell your requests to God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I am able to do all things through the one who strengthens me. Our second reading is Psalm 55, and the note tells the choir master that this is a teaching song of David. I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> Give ear to my prayer, O God, do not hide yourself from my supplication. Attend to me and answer me. I am troubled in my complaint. I am distraught by the noise of my enemy because of the clamor of the wicked, for they bring trouble upon me and in anger they bear a grudge against me. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling come upon me and horror overwhelms me. And I say, oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Truly, I would fly away. I would lodge in the wilderness. I would hurry to find a shelter for myself from the raging wind and tempest. Confuse, O oh Lord, confound their speech, for I see violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go around it on the, its walls, and iniquity and trouble are within it. Ruin is in its midst. Oppression and fraud do not depart from its marketplace. It is not enemies who taunt me. I could bear that. 
It is not adversaries who deal insolently with me. I could hide from them. But it is you, my equal, my companion, my familiar friend, with whom I keep pleasant company. We walked in the house of God with the throng. Let death come upon them. Let them go down alive to Sheol, for evil is in their homes and their hearts. But I call upon God, and God will save me. Evening and morning and at noon I utter my complaint and moan, and God will hear my voice. God will redeem me unharmed from the battle I wage, for many are arrayed against me. God, who is enthroned from of old, will hear and humble them because they do not change and do not fear God. My companion laid hands on a friend and violated a covenant with me with speech smoother than butter, but with a heart set on war with words that were softer than oil, but in fact were drawn swords. Cast your burden on God and you will be sustained. God will never permit the righteous to be moved, but you, O oh God, will cast them down into the lowest pit. The bloodthirsty and treacherous shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in you. God is still speaking. Amen. Good morning again. I have the uh, privilege of uh, introducing to you a young man that, <clears throat> excuse me, you all helped me walk through the ordination process to become an ordained and licensed community outreach minister. <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is leaving me, but pray for me. Well, it'll hang in here. <laughs> uh, Reverend Pete Everett. But before I bring Pete before you, I just want to make a few comments. One is, um, this is the second year that I've been asked to share reflection at the 4th of July <laughs> service at Robbinsdale Parkway UCC. <clears throat> Someone told me it would be because nobody would be here. <laughs> They'd be up at their cabins. But some of you are here. Yeah, some of you are here. It's not true what they said. Um, last year, I was in uh, Missouri <clears throat> welcoming a new great-grandson, but I was also there uh, waiting until the 4th of August uh, after having been here in Minnesota to celebrate Juneteenth, which is the Freedom Day for African Americans. I was in Missouri, my home state, state I was born, to celebrate uh, August 4th, which is, folks didn't hear we were free down there until <laughs> August, so anyway. The young man that's coming before you this morning I met 21 plus years ago as the Viking sent a busload of young people down to Missouri to stand on the grounds that our people had been slaves and they were able to um, take part in the celebration. And on that bus was a young man uh, named Pete Everett. And we, our paths kind of separated for a while but then a couple of years ago, they came back to gather again. And this morning, Pete's going to share with you how he's come this far by faith. But what I wanted to do is to share with you a little bit about something I find so interesting. We talked about it yesterday. And that is that you can do so many great things and have so many great accomplishments. And I, there was a Bible that Robin Sale Parkway UCC gave me, a children's Bible. And in it, Bishop Desmond Tutu said, it's only what you do that is a reflection of your love for Christ, your love for God, your love for your neighbors, oh, excuse me, and your love for someone else that makes a difference. So as Independence Day is celebrated, I just wanted to give a quick example of someone who did so, so very much good. But he's remembered not for the good he did, but now for what he did not do. 
And that's our third president, Thomas Jefferson. He served as governor of Virginia, as US minister of France, as author of the Statue of Virginia for Religious Freedom, and was father of the University of Virginia, secretary of state, vice president, and third president of this still great nation. You have to leave it sometime to really realize how great it is, and I've had that opportunity to do that. And he was principal author of the Declaration of American Independence, but we know from history that he did many, many good things, but one thing we know that could not have possibly made God happy is that as he drafted the Declaration of Independence, he left out to extend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness to African Americans, indentured slavery, slaves, and servants, and women. <laughs> um, I don't know about you, but I'm sure that I wouldn't want to stand <clears throat> before our maker and judge and, and have um, never gotten around to doing what I knew was right and what God would have wanted me to do. I want to be able to echo in the words of Jesus that he prayed in the final hours, I glorify you on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. So I want you to think for a minute and ask, how often, how often do I do the things that God really wants me to do? With the work I'm doing, what do I want to be remembered for? I want you to think about it for a moment as newly ordained minister Pete Everett comes to you and tells you about what he wants to be remembered for. Once, ag <clears throat> Once again, Pete is a grandfather and every weekend he has these boys with him. He brings his grandsons with him. We're passing the mantle. Woo <laughs> um, Good morning, everyone. My name is um, Peter Everett, and I am a new minister. And I want to thank um, Dr. Geraldine Carter. I want to thank T. Michael, um, wonderful man. I sat with him about a month ago. We had a real good conversation, real humble man. I, I, and, and I want to just thank you for allowing me to have this, go through this process of being a ordained minister. Um, come over here. These are my babies. Um, you know, for a while, for you know, for a few, some years, I had them all the time, every day. I'm a certified um, technician, so past few months, I just, you know, um, get them over the weekends and sometime through the weekend. As you can see, you know, they, you know, we are inseparable. <laughs> you know, they have separate rooms, but of course, they want to sleep in the bed with Pop Dad, and next thing you know, I'm on the floor. <laughs> but these are my babies, and. And um, one second. Oh, man. It's, it's work. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so one of the things I just want to talk about the process that I went through, it was a beautiful process. It was a process that, that had uh, revealed a lot about myself. And, you know, it's something that I wasn't, you know, I, I never thought that I'll be ever doing being a, a um, minister for God. Yeah. Oh, my life changed some years ago, and I just thank, thank you for this process. No, you can't mess with the mic. Thank you for this process. Um, like um, um, Dr. Carter uh, mentioned some years ago, I used to work for at Survival Skills, and, and I did a suspension program. It was an SOS program. It was um, um, Save Our Students, which it was a suspension program. And so, when those kids were getting sent home and doing whatever, all, all north side, stop, stop. All, all north Minneapolis elementary and middle school kids, they would bring, it, bring them over to survival skills. And um, I would keep them structured. You know, we would do a lot of good and positive things and that brought down that suspension rate by 50%. And so that summer we did a, a summer program and we had 10, 10 girls, 10 boys, 
and we had, uh, did all kind of fun stuff. And uh, at times, Dr. Carter would be coming in and out of town. You know, she's a busy woman. And, and she had put together a trip for us to go down to Missouri. And it was, I mean, some of the kids never even left north side of Minneapolis, let alone going to Missouri. And I'm talking about, she laid it out for us. We went on a charter bus. We, we ate so many times throughout the day. We had a really good, wonderful experience. And so, and so now, fast forward to, to today, um, I have a youth program. It's called a Youth Leadership Development and Self-Esteem Enhancement Program. And I'm focusing on boys, BIPOC boys, black and indigenous people of color. Boys, nine, nine to 16. Sorry about this. And, um, and so, so my focus is on nine to 16 year old boys. And it's a leadership development program. And um, it's based around all God's principle. My life would not be the same, well, wouldn't be what it is now if it wasn't for the Lord. And so with these principles and other things that, thank you so much. And this is all what we need, some support. I appreciate that. And um, some of the things we focus on is coping skills, triggers, trauma, um, goal setting, the things I can and cannot control. And one of the main things that I like to focus on is being, being a person of your word. Please. And so with this program, not only will it help develop leaders, but change lives. And as you can see, I have these boys so much, it's the same principles. <laughs> the, same, the, same, the same principle God instilled in me, I instilled to them. As you can see, it's work. It's all gas, no breaks all day long. I'm sorry. I need a nap. <laughs> I would love to share more about my program. I have flyers, I have cards. If you want to know anything else, I would love to share because I don't know how much longer I can hold both of them. <laughs> this is a lot of work. Thank you and God bless you. Man, I'm so proud. I'm so proud. And, and, and there are others out there who are like Pete and um, now he and Delano Gurley uh, will be able to take other young men through the, uh, who want to do outreach ministry through the ordination and licensing process, help them put on the whole armor of God. So now what I would like for you to do is to uh, close your eyes and let us together Step into the presence of the divine as we do our community prayer. Spirit of the living God, we acknowledge your presence in us, Lord. We are so grateful for a relationship with you because it is what keeps us and allows us to remain steadfast under trials. Remaining steadfast under trials is a difficult thing to do especially during these unprecedented and unpredictable times. We're in pain, Lord, and our pain grows greater every day as we watch our young, our future, our youth give up hope and take their own lives and the lives of others in our schools and communities across the nation. Our suffering is great, Lord, but you have brought our ancestors through troubled times before and we have come this far by faith, and we believe that you'll do it again for us. We're leaning and depending on you. 
Lord God, we give thanks because some of us who've been on the battlefield for so long have grown a little weary during the mental tri many trials we have faced. But you told us in your word in Galatians 6 verse 9 that we should not grow weary in doing good, for we will re reap a harvest in due season if we do not give up. So we thank you for harvest time and for young men like Minister Pete Everett and Delano Gurley who are willing and not afraid to go out on the front lines to carry a message of hope to our unchurched families and youth who do not know you or the work you can and will do. These young men carry a message of hope to those who have lost hope. They tell our youth about someone who will bear their burdens, share their troubles, fix their hearts, and regulate their troubled minds, Lord. These young men are not afraid to step out from behind closed doors and reach out to our young and tell them about someone who can turn their darkness into day, someone they can place their hope and faith in, someone who won't disappoint them, someone who won't let them down. His name is Jesus, and we love him. <laughs> Precious Lord, it's my prayers, my heart desires that you continue to touch the hearts and minds of young men and women who want to develop a relationship with you. And they want to live in such a way that you can use them to rescue souls who have lost their way home. Let them be unafraid and strong and believe that what it says in Romans 8.31, when God is for you, who can be against you? I'm so grateful, God, that you saw me as worthy. I thank you for my pastor, D. Michael, who has helped me work with these young people who can now guide others through the ordination and licensing requirement for community outreach ministry. God, I'm so grateful that I realized early in life that none of those rewards that society has to offer, titles, success, financial gain, attentions, have any lasting value in comparison to what you offer. In the end, everything that is not from you will fade away. It means nothing. Eternal life from you, with you, Lord, means everything. So continue to strengthen me and my sisters and brothers in Christ who want to make a positive impact on friends and family and community. And although we may no longer be able to go out on the front lines, we can pray, support, and mentor others who still can. And Lord, I want to be remembered as a community mother who taught survival skills and led other young souls who have been abused and neglected to you. I just want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. And in closing our community prayer, Lord, bless all those all over the world who are in need and suffering. You know who they are and what they need. And please, God, as we celebrate independence tomorrow. Continue to bless our great nation because America is great and America is still beautiful. Yes, we have problems, but Lord, as long as we lean and depend on you, you will walk us through. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's do the Maori Lord's Prayer in unison. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God, in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With this bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trial too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. 
uh, before the offertory and Wendy, I want to just remind you that our loose change offering is going to the Northside Achievement Zone and um, they are working to close the achievement gap and ending generational poverty in North Minneapolis. So uh, otherwise, do what you do. We have the all the ways set up and that's it. <laughs> happy thankfuls um, there's one happy and thankful for survival skills ministry and this one's from Mary Cook I'm grateful that my son's wedding went off without a hitch last Sunday this one's from Bernard Walters a safe trip and good time with Pastor T and Ken Beck while in DC we're happy and thankful for you too This one's from Nicole Anderson, who is happy and thankful for the St. Paul Saints 4th of July fireworks game, and the weather is perfect for baseball. Yeah. And this one is for happy and thankful for a wonderful, for a wonderful sermon by the community. would please stand and body your spirit and let us pray together the prayer of dedication living spirit bring to the bones of these gifts the flesh of our actions and the breath of our commitment that our church and our service to others may come to life in your name amen
become travelers in life to every table where you are welcome. Come dusty or dressed up, hungry or full. Come lonely or in company, awkward or at ease. Come to receive what is given, to offer your peace and kindness, to say the words that are in your heart. Come to this table as host and guest, even as Christ is guest and host. For communion is your gift to give and to receive. A piece of bread and peace of heart, the full cup of compassion and strength for any new road. Words of remembering. We remember some old instructions as if they were meant for us. Jesus told his disciples to carry no purse, for they and we are rich enough. Jesus told them to leave the suitcases, for they and we have holy roller bags. <laughs> Jesus told them no sandals necessary in a community that washes feet. Jesus told them to offer peace and to speak so anyone who hears knows they listen to God. We remember that Jesus calls us harvest gatherers and lambs. And we remember the Passover supper with lamb and bitter herbs, bread from grain and fruit from the vine, and then gave them to us all to remember love on every road and every homecoming. In, the, in sanctuaries and living rooms, we rest our hands lightly upon these elements. Um, which we set aside today to be a sacrament. Let us ask God's blessing upon them, upon us, and upon all those who are in our prayers this morning. In your spirit, upon every piece of every loaf, so it is the bread of heaven. And for your love, every cup, so it is the cup of blessing. Strengthen the need of travelers and welcomers on your holy way. Healed and healers, comforters and comforters, rich in hope and givers of hope. In the name of Jesus, whose table is always to serve and be served. Share this harvest of the promise of life. May it fill us with peace. Drink from the fruit of God's vine. May we taste new words of love. This is not how we do it in our church, but <laughs> so she's guiding me through the process here. <laughs> so we have the little cups with the little, you know. Okay. Come, everyone, come forward.
Christ. Let us pray. For the wind at our back, for the tables of strangers and friends, for the peace of being welcomed, and the joy of welcoming others, we give you thanks. For the body of Christ that comes to us in plate and cup and lives by us in our journeys onward, we give you thanks and praise and a promise. Amen. Amen. Stand. Before Sue gives a benediction, it's going to be very powerful, so hold on one second. Come back at 3 o'clock for this amazing community meal. Yesterday, this weird thing happened. I'm, a, I'm at home. Morgan and I are sitting there. Um, we're sweaty from working in the garden and stuff. And, and, um, and this uh, African, -American, the African family came from the Togo church to our house with, with stuff to wear. So, so we are now dressed in West African garb to celebrate this potluck. So if you want to see me and Morgan 
dressed in our West African way, with this beautiful royal kente cloth, come at 3 o'clock. That's a picture waiting to happen. Right? So please, please come. It's first, and, and second of all, Kristen did not guilt trip you. I asked her to, but on the piece of paper. But it said, it's going to look really bad if just a few of us are there. We got to show up in mass, folks online, folks here, three o'clock, please come. Sue, take us home. Jesus inspires us to change lives. He calls many of us to do that in many different ways, and we are grateful for all those who can do that. And God calls us to love one another. So let us go forth in peace to serve the world God loves. Amen.